Shalom. Call Halalam, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh by Hashem Rakakwadash. Call Halalam, all praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, the name of our Father and Creator in ancient Hebrew, who the world calls God. By Hashem, in the name of Yahweh Shai, the name of our Lord and Savior in ancient Hebrew, who the world calls Jesus. By Hashem, in the name of Raka Kodash, Holy Spirit in ancient Hebrew. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, who teach this gospel and push it to the four corners of the world, of the earth, that is, the four directions of the earth. For we are scattered abroad, pursuing to John, Salakia, James 1 and 1. Salutations to the hope elect, Shalom, which means greetings, peace be unto you. Okay, I wanted to do a video today. Um, <clears throat> it was my intention to do this video a few days ago. Um, I thought I had it, um, uh, had everything down on it, and uh, I said, you know, it makes no sense to let this all this time pass by today and not do a video on it. For those of us who are prepared, can participate. And it is most importantly that we participate in this day. Uh, for this is one of the feast days, okay? And that is the Day of Atonement. The Day of Atonement comes in this evening at sundown. And normally I would have been, uh, uh, had already had this up, but uh, for the last, over the last several days I've been having a lot of problems with my phone and uh, stuff like that. And uh, easy screen recorder. And so I've switched to Mobizen. I think, which is what a lot of brothers use to record. You see the M on your little screen now as I move it around there on my screen. But um, uh, better late than never. So I definitely want to get this this video done. Um, I have some other videos up, as I had spoken on some of my other videos from the other day here. But uh, this is a very important one. This is not, if not the most important one right now. And that's the Day of Atonement, okay? Um, our scripture reading comes to us from Leviticus chapter 23, starting at the 26th verse. Um, and it is, uh, the precept is coming from Numbers chapter 29, 7 through 11th verses. Um, so we will go into what the Day of Atonement is and what we should be doing on the Day of Atonement and why do we do it. Okay, so hopefully this lesson will be edifying to you. Okay, um. We're going to start reading. We're going to study some of these words on here so we can get a better understanding of what the Day of Atonement is, okay? Now, we know there are three uh, uh, most important feast days that all males must, must attend for the children of Israel, and that is the Day of Passover, which is explained in Exodus chapter 12, um, the Day of Atonement, which is explained here in Leviticus chapter 23, and um, the Feast of Tabernacles, okay? Feast of Tabernacles uh, runs around, uh, it is, it starts at the 15th day, if I'm not mistaken, okay, of the month, okay. Now, first of all, we know that in Exodus chapter 12, uh, let's, let's go there real quick. Um, I just want to cover it all here if I can, as the spirit of it is rolling and whatnot. Um, Exodus chapter 12. Let's go there right quick. And then this is called the Passover lamb, okay? And as you can see here, um, Exodus 12 and 1, And the Lord power spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, So this is before the children of Israel come out of Egypt, okay? This is before they left Egypt, okay? This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Now, this month is the month that we celebrate that we, on our calendar, which is March. So, January and February was never in the, in front of March, okay? Um, the calendar has changed so many times. Days have been added. Days have been taken away. Uh, there's a scripture that comes to me, if I can get it. Uh, let's see if I can get it right quick. Um, saying that the, the wicked are you know, the ones that... That change, that try to change the seasons and the times thereof. They continue to try to do that. They try to, they try to confuse the children of Israel, and we are not confused. Okay, um, I'll get that scripture for you in just a minute. Just hold one tight. Let's lock it for us. Uh, let's get it right quick. 
Um, I have my desktop before me, so I'm on my desktop right now. Uh, there it is right there. Uh, scripture I learned very, very early in my walk. <laughs> and I haven't uh, uh, visited since. And that's Daniel 7.25. Let's get it right quick. Um, um, but as you can see on our Gregorian calendar, which is the calendar in the United States of America that we go by January through December, is not correct. It is not correct at all. This is one of the reasons why we should not celebrate our birthday. Because you don't know when you were born. You have no earthly idea. You really don't. Okay, if you notice, some days got 30 days. Some some months have 30 days. Some months have 31. So February has 28. When there's a leap year, which is every so many years, it has 29. I mean, come on now. Now, remember now, the, the Sabbath is determined by the new moon. Now, the new moon goes through all of its phases. It's on a 30-day cycle. The moon is on a 30-day cycle. 30-day cycle. This is one of the reasons why, in my opinion now, this is my opinion, this is not the Bible, but in my opinion why it seems like the new moon comes in, the new moon comes in on a different day every month. Like, uh, I think last, uh, right now, it is coming in Monday to Tuesday evening. Monday evening to Tuesday evening sundown, Okay. Um, last month, I believe it was, uh, Saturday to Sunday, even sun sundown. So it's coming in on a different month every month. Okay. Simply because some days have 30 days, some days have 31, some have 29. You know, that February has 28 days, but has 29th on a leap year, which is so many years. I mean, whatever the hell that is. <sighs> so this is the reason why the new moon is coming in on a different day every month. Every 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 month, each and every month, it's coming in on a different day. Sometimes I I have what we have what what I refer to as a double Sabbath, and a double Sabbath. This is just me now. This is not the Bible. I call it a double Sabbath because the last Sabbath of the month may come in on a Friday, Friday evening, Saturday evening, sundown, and then at Saturday evening, sundown is the new moon. So I'm celebrating the last Sabbath of last month. And the new moon, which is the new Sabbath of the month, at the same time. So it's the last Sabbath is falling in on Friday evening at sundown, the Saturday evening at sundown, and then Saturday evening at sundown is the new moon. So that's two Sabbaths back to back. That's what I call it. That's how I refer to it. Me, 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 Ambassador of Yahweh, the Yahweh. That's me now. Me. Okay, now, that's how I refer to it. And all of the people who uh, are in my camp and are in who I brought to the knowledge of, that I helped to understand the truth, because I didn't bring them to the truth. The Bible says, it is the Lord that draweth them near. So he does the drawing. I do, you know, I come in where I help them to understand it and teach it, teach the truth to the best of my ability, um, as far as what I have read and understood through reading and study. So now, um, getting back to it here. Um, so let's go here. Now, as you can see in Exodus 12 and 2, this month should be until you the beginning of your month. It should be the first month of the year. And remember, month, there is no word uh, month in Hebrew is moon. Okay. There is no word month in Hebrew. So, um, so like when we would say, you know, when you, when, when you, when you going to go and get your new car, I'm going to get my new car. Instead of saying that the first of the month, you're going to just say it new moon. Because that moon means month. Okay. So now, getting right along. Um. So now, this is one of our first uh, uh, um, uh, Passover is, is, uh, is Exodus chapter 12 is one of our first feastables that all males must attend. Okay? So getting back to the, the Day of Atonement, uh, I'm just going to read through the scriptures here through and uh, break, any, break any words. I'm going to study any words that we might not understand or words that we think we might understand what it means. I'm still going to study that scripture. And go over a few things that we should be doing. Actually, the scriptures speak for themselves. Okay, now. Okay, so here we go right here. This is called, as you can see, the Day of Atonement. Okay. And um, <clears throat> Leviticus 23, 36. And the Lord power spake unto Moses, saying, Also on the tenth day of the seventh month. Now, this is the seventh month. Now, right now, today's date is September the 15th. Okay, but this is the seventh month because like I stated earlier, January and February were never in there. They were never in the lineup. Um, the, 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 the year started out with March being the first year, first month of the year. Okay, but like I said in Daniel 725, 
We never got that scripture. Let's get that scripture right quick and cover it. Right quick and then we can come back. Daniel 7.25. And it states. Um, okay. And he shall speak. And this is this is the, uh, one of the four beasts. Okay. Um, and the beast represents our enemy. Esau Edom. Uh, revived Roman Empire, Roman Empire. We know that the revived Roman Empire, which is the six beasts which we live in now, which we're under the rule of the revived Roman Empire right now, which consists of NATO, European Union, and the UN, United Nations, come out of the fourth beast, okay, which is uh, come out of Greek, Rome itself, okay, because we know that the Edomites, which are ruling this country right now today, so-called white men, are descendants of Esau, Genesis 36 and 1. So let's continue. Okay, and it says here that, um, let's go back up. Okay, uh, the Ancient of Days there in Daniel 7.22 is our Father, our Creator. He is known as the Ancient of Days. That's why we say we speak ancient Hebrew. Okay, because we know there is, we have to make a, a, a specification for modern Hebrew, which is the language, which is Yiddish. is a combination of many languages. The God we serve is a holy God. Holy means separated, hallowed, consecrated, holy, set apart. Okay, so there is no mixture, no mingling, no mix up, no confusion, that is. Because that's what American Babylon, spiritual Babylon, the great is all about. Uh, a mix, a mixing up of, a mixing of many different religions, a mix of many different gods, all rolled into one. Spiritual, sovereign, spiritual, Egypt, spiritual Babylon, just mixing up and combining and blending in and... You get the idea. Okay, now. So we go back to Daniel 7.24 here. Daniel 7.25. And he shall speak. He mean the beast. And he shall speak. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And he shall speak great words concerning the Most High. And shall swear, shall lock you, And shall wear out the saints of the Most High. That's with all the blasphemy and all the different persecutions and things that we are experiencing right now and we have been experiencing for some time since we came into this country under bondage, Exodus 22, which is captivity, which is slavery, okay? Um, and hold on, and he shall speak great words against the Most High, Yahweh by Shem Yavashai, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws, okay? <laughs> think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time, and a, and a times and a divide of time. So that's the that's the period point of um a time and a time a period a time that's that's coming up to tribulation. That's all of our time that we've been here in Babylon the Great, uh, uh spiritual sovereign spiritual Egypt, slavery, captivity, exodus, bondage. Okay, Exodus twenty and two. That is okay. So as you can see there, they change times. They, the Bible says they seek to change the times. They seek to change the times. How do they do that? They said that, first of all, the law, James, they seek to change the times and the laws. They said the law wasn't in faith. We find out that not to be true because Matthew 5, 17 says, I've not come to destroy the law of the prophets. Okay, I've come to fulfill it. Okay, because he was written up in the law. He said that he would come to perform the law. And it was written of and spoken of in the testaments of the prophets. So if he is, if he, if he, so he by, 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 the, by the Bible declaring the end from the beginning, okay, and by the prophets writing of one to come for the remission of the saints for the children of Israel, then he did exactly that. Jeremiah 1 and 12, for thou hast well seen, he watched over his word to perform it. Okay, so um, that's something that we will note there. Okay. They also tried to say that um, that that Sabbath comes in every Sunday. That's incorrect because we know that Ezekiel forty six and one, Isaiah sixty six twenty three, Psalm eighty one three, Second Kings four twenty three. Okay, New Testament, Greek Testament, Colossians two sixteen, all state that from one new moon to another, from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come before me to worship me, says the Lord Power. So the new moon is determined, the Sabbath is determined by the new moon, which comes in on a different month every month because they done added days to the month and done took away days from the month. You see, you understand, hopefully you do. Okay, now, so getting back to, uh, getting back to where we are here. Now, 
Get him back in Leviticus 23, 28. Let's go up to the top of the Day of Atonement. And the Lord power spake unto Moses, saying, Also on the tenth day of the seventh month, there shall be a Day of Atonement. It shall be a holy convocation unto you. And ye shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord power. Okay, let's break that scripture down. On the tenth day of the month, when we know the new moon is the first day of the month. Okay, the new moon for this month that we live in, so-called September, came in on the 6th. That was the new moon. Okay, at sundown. Okay, so now, when you count 10 days from the 6th, you're going to get to come up with the 16th, which is tomorrow. But tomorrow, tomorrow, t tomorrow starts at sundown. Today. Okay, <laughs> so September 15th, which is today. At sundown, which is going to be something around maybe like 7, I don't know, 7.30 p.m. as Eastern Standard Time estimated, is the beginning at, of sundown. So at sundown is begins the Day of Atonement, which is the 16th of the so-called month of September. Hold on, Salaki, Salaki, give me a second. What now? Oh, I am working. I'm doing a video right now. Day of Atonement. I am working there right now. Okay, um... So, um, sorry about that, sorry, sorry for the interruption, uh, it's about the rain in my area, which I knew the rain was coming up, and I meant to go out there and move my cars on the fence, this fence cut some grass outside, but, um, I'll get to it, and just let it, hope that this lesson won't be too long here. Okay, so let's say the word, um, let's say the word convocation here, okay? Okay, the day of atonement, let's study atonement. As you can see there, the word keeper. That's what the modern Hebrews call it. Okay, they call it Yom Kippur. And uh, let's see what it means. Okay. Um, atonement. Expiation. Okay. Um, atonement. Okay, let's see here. Redemption. Atonement. Okay, Day of Atonement. Okay, now, let's see here. Okay, we're going to offer, is a sin offering for atonement? Okay, um, like you get the tone, you get here the tone, we're going to set the tone, okay, for this new year. We're going to set the tone for what we've done in our past lives. We're going to set the tone. We're going to set a new tone. Okay, but we're going to say that word in, um, in Google right quick. Okay, uh, let's see, define atonement. 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 Okay. This is the reparation for a wrong or an injury. Okay. A reparation for a wrong or an uh, injury. Uh, let's look at similar words. But similar words is compensation. Okay. So this is the feast that Yahweh Shai set aside for, has set aside for the atonement for sins. For the children of Israel, their sins in this past life before we came to knowledge of truth, and even some of us who come to knowledge of truth and still had some issues and some problems have not fully repented yet. Even up until this day, things that we may be doing that we're not realizing that we're not doing, that we should be doing that we're not doing, and it's coming to our attention some things are not because we haven't come to the knowledge thereof of those things yet. Okay, that we should also be doing, but also from our past lives. Okay. You know, by through the regeneration of spirits, the spirit, it's like the through regeneration of spirits, we now know and understand that we are our, our forefathers, okay? So by regeneration of spirits, the Bible says that when we die, our bodies go to the ground, our soul, our spirit goes back to the heavens, and when we, we, uh, when we leave the earthly realm where only sin abounds, our spirit becomes a righteous spirit, goes back before the throne of Yahweh, Shem Shah receives our judgment for how we live this life. Whether we repented, whether we came to knowledge of the truth, whether we followed the knowledge of the truth, whether we did what we were supposed to do according to the Bible stating, uh, if you love me, you will keep my commandments, John 14, 15. Okay, and fear the Most High, keeping His commandments the whole duty of man, Ecclesiastes 12, 13. So from that point, we, then our spirit remains in heaven to the third or fourth generation. In the third or fourth generation, and then when I say third or fourth generation, if you have a child now, that's your first generation. Your child's child is your second generation. Your grandchild is your third generation. And your fourth generation is your great-grandchild. Your spirit comes back in the earth again in the third to your grandchild. Or the fourth generation, your great-grandchild's body. Okay? 
and you relive, you you live you live on the earth again. For Ecclesiastes three sixteen says, uh, judgment is um, is on the earth under the sun. Let's get that right quick when we get back to the scriptures here. Um, so anyway, so that's what we're going to be doing um, on that day. Okay, uh, let's get that right quick, and we'll come back. Ecclesiastes three sixteen. Ecclesiastes 3.16, and it reads, There's a time for everything. And moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment. Now, judgment can be a good thing and it can be a bad thing. Okay? That I saw, and moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment. That wickedness was there and the place of righteousness. That iniquity was there. So as you can see right there, you definitely can begin to see and understand from that point. That uh, yeah, the rain is already coming down pretty good already. Okay, um, but anyway, so we can see right then and there that our place of judgment is going to be a place of righteousness. Okay, that um, okay, and more of I saw under the sun the place of judgment that wickedness was there and the place of righteousness. Why is it the place of righteousness? Because after kingdom translation. The, the, the third heaven will, will descend down to the first heaven. You can read about that in Revelation chapter 4. Okay, and there the Lord is going to set up his kingdom right here on earth. So this is the place of righteousness after he cleanses the earth by fire. This is the place of righteousness, but also it's the place of wickedness. Also because wickedness is still here right now as we speak. Okay, evil is definitely here. Okay, and that's when, and notice where it says, and more of I saw under the sun, the place of the earth. What place is under the sun? The earth. The earth. The sun rises over the sun rises over the earth every day and sets over the earth. So that's where the place of judgment is. Okay. Now, getting back to uh, our scriptures at hand, let's look at our time. We're at 22 minutes. Hopefully we're going to try to get this up right quick. Get through this here. And that's a lot for my video being a little bit out of order a little bit. Um. I just knew I was trying to get in here and get uh, get this video done, and but at the same time I I also was trying, knowing the rain was coming. Now the rain is already falling right now as we speak. So, I mean I got one window down, probably about three or four inches. I think it'll be okay. But uh, yeah, we're moving right along. Okay now, um, okay, let's go back here. Let's close these tools up and let's continue to read. Okay, and actually. The Day of Atonement, we've, we've covered the Day of Atonement, so let's let's look at, let's start the word complication here. Okay, which we need to get that. Holy, again, holy means set apart. Consecrated. This is a day that is unlike no other day. This is a day you do different 100%. Okay, um, uh, so let's get complication. Okay. Something called out, a public meeting. The act, the persons, or the place. Also, rehearsal, an assembly, calling, convocation, and a reading. Okay, and that goes along into say that we're, uh, that goes along into some of the dues that we should be doing on on uh, atonement on day of atonement. We should be reading. We should be studying. We should be praising Yahweh. Should be Shah. We should be. Um, it's also a day of fasting. Okay, so um, on that day we should fast. We should really try our best to put in a twenty-four hour fast. Um, if we I, I don't really want to say if we can't put in a 24-hour fast because some of us are going to receive this information late in the day or it's just going to come to us. Hey, wait a minute. It's the day of the day of atonement, ain't it? God dang it. <laughs> you know, I mean, it shouldn't be like that, but sometimes it be like that. You know, whatnot. So uh, right now we are here to rehearse the righteous acts of the law under his grace and mercy, the grace of Yahweh. So now let's read here. Convocation. Convoking, reading, a calling together, a convocation, sacred assembly, convoking, reading. And one of the greatest things to understand is that all the children of Israel right now, all of us that are awake who have the knowledge of the truth according to the truth, Great Millstone has the truth, 144%. Okay, that's who I learned this truth from. Um, help, they helped me to understand the truth, that is. And uh, along with the Rakaku, the Spirit of Truth, the Holy Spirit. Uh, now, those of us, all, all, all on all of this day, a lot, all of us are going to be praying and praising Yahweh Shemeshah. So we're calling on His name in ancient Hebrew, His true 
holy name in ancient Hebrew on the same day all around the world because we're scattered all around. We're scattered abroad all throughout the world pursuant to James 1 and 1. The speckled bird, Jeremiah 12 and 9. We're all over everywhere. So all of us are engaged into the Holy Spirit at the same time. Praying, praising, and speaking in the name of Yahweh, Shem Yahweh So anyone who is who has an issue of blood or anyone who, who requires healing or anyone who is requesting healing, not requires, anyone who requesting, who is requesting healing in the name of Yahweh, Shem Yahweh Shah, this, this, you, you definitely want to be involved in this. Okay, you definitely want to be involved in this uh, Day of Atonement because anything can happen. You know, we know that soon and very soon miracles are going to be happening all over the earth right now. In the name of Yahweh, Shem Yahweh Shah, the Lord is going to show up and show out and show you that He is who He is. You see, so, and he is Lord of our lives, Jehovah, you know, so, so now, we'll run along now. So let's go ahead and get this here. Okay. A calling together, a convocation, an assembly called, assembly called together, a sacred convocation, a sacred convocation calling together. Okay, a, reckon, re, a recitation, a reading, okay. They listen to the reading, so I definitely am going to be doing a, a lot of reading in this day, starting at sundown, as late as I can, and I'm really going to try to get up. Sometimes I, when I go to sleep, I only sleep for three or four hours at night. I'm going to get up and get right back to it. You know, when I ain't sleeping and when I ain't resting, when I ain't laying down, I'm listening to the Bible being spoken. I like to read the Bible. I don't really, I, I'll listen to the video sometimes lay down. So, um, and I don't really fall asleep. I'm constantly listening to it. To listen to what's being stated, okay. But now, getting back to personal hand here. Um, so, here we go. Uh, it's a lot here for that. Um, there's a lot going on today at this house. The phone ringing a lot, there's a whole lot going on. I know I want to do this video, and I'm getting it done, okay. So, now. Let's go to verse 23, 20, Leviticus chapter 23, 28. And ye shall do no work in that same day, but it is the day of atonement, to make an atonement for you before the Lord power. Now, we do realize, okay, um, we do realize that um, we're, we, we, we're, we're living under the laws of Babylon the Great. And we know that there are going to be some times where we're going to have to go to work. Okay, but those of us who have to go to work, uh, we should still fast. Put forth our efforts to fast, okay, to cleanse and purge ourselves, okay, and we know that we should also still put forth the effort to do reading and studying and praying wherever we can. If that's in our cars, we take a break, we go to our car, we catch some reading in, catch a video, we do some praying, some praying there, or whatnot. So we're going to do all that we can when we cannot do what we want to be doing, which is serving the Lord a hundred percent wholeheartedly, okay. Let's go back to Leviticus 23, 27, because I didn't explain that video, that break, that, that, that scripture out as much as I could. Okay, also on the tenth day of the seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be a holy convocation to you, and you shall flick your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord power, okay? Now, we're not doing sin offerings anymore as, as at this point, okay? And we aren't doing those those uh, those offerings because Yahweh Shai is the ultimate sacrifice and offering for the children of Israel, the ransom, okay? So we're not doing that anymore. But now, what what we are gonna do is um, uh, hold on here. What we are gonna do here is do this. Okay, we're gonna say the word afflict, and ye shall afflict your souls. Okay, now my mom used to say, "God darn your soul." <laughs> okay, so here we go. Um, okay, now let's look at it. What does the word afflict mean? Through the idea of looking down a brow beaten, beating our brow, you know, to depress, literally or figuratively. Okay, so we're going to be depressed, we're going to uh, afflict ourselves, we're going to answer, we're going to chasten ourselves. Chasten means to correct ourselves, um, even in thought or in our thinking, deal hardly with, defile, exercise, force, gentleness, humble, hurt, ravish, sing, by mistake, for I don't know what that is, speak. Submit self weaken in any wise or any way. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna become humble. Okay, we're gonna flick humble, exercise, 
We're going to exile the rights acts of the law. We're going to sing. We're going to be troubled. And so we're going to have that feeling, okay? We're going to be occupied, be busy with praying, praising, and studying, okay? Uh, our word. We're going to be afflicted. We're going to be oppressed, um, humble, um, be afflicted, be bowed down, be poor in spirit, be poor, okay? Because that's uh, Psalm, Matthew 5, 5, Psalm 37, 11, the meek shall inherit the earth. What does the word meek mean? Poor. On the bottom, you know, the Bible says the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Those are the last of the people in the house. Nobody holler pay attention to them because nobody don't know what they're doing and they ain't holler got a lot and they ain't don't make a whole lot of money and they, you know, they always got a problem. They always got an issue. Yeah, but they are trust and faith in your heart by shooting up shot. They don't have no pride in their lives either. You know, it ain't about what I can do and all I got and I got the money because, you know, I make the money and all that. Yeah, yeah, okay, well, and... All that you all that, that you have will come from who? Yahweh Shem Yom Shai, Deuteronomy 8, 18 is God that giveth thee the power to get well. So all your help and your power and your wealth has come from him. If you don't acknowledge him and you act like you got it going on, the, usually those people usually have a major setback. So the Lord can show them who he is. And show them that he has the power to uplift and have power to take down. That's the first Samuel 2 and 7. The Lord lifted up, the Lord bring it down. The Lord make it rich, the Lord make it poor. Okay? Now, continue on. To be afflicted, to be depressed, be downcast, to humble oneself, bow down, to be afflicted, uh, to mishandle. Come on, thing in Maduki. To humble, weaken oneself, to be afflicted, to be humble, to afflict, to want, to humble oneself, to be afflicted, okay? All right, and we're going to see it here also again. To bestow labor upon anything, um, um, till the ground. No, we, we were never supposed to work. But now, you know, as far as Genesis chapter 3, um, now we're working by the sweat of our brow, okay? All right, uh. Be afflicted, to be depressed, to be oppressed, okay, brought low, okay, to submit oneself, okay. So we get the idea that afflictions means to look at the lives that we've led here in Babylon the Great, you know, how we are special people above all the people of the earth and how we're on the bottom, okay. And and these these heathens have begun to to uh to 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 rule over us and devour us, which is the last few scriptures in Second Ezra chapter six, uh, fifty four through fifty six. If you go below, the, if you go down past fifty six verse, all the way down to the end, it was like the fifty ninth verse, I believe. That's that scripture that I just 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 mentioned just now. So um, now I'm walking around in my room, not looking at the uh, I could pull it up, but uh. So now, but that's that's what we're going to be doing. So we're going to be, and we're going to be humbling ourselves for what we have done in this life and in our past lives. Because as I stated, through a generation of spirits, we've been here before. Our spirit has been here before, three or four generations before me, before my me living here today on this earth. I was in a different body. Okay, and if you go all the way back three or four generations ago. The last time my spirit was here, I believe I was in slavery here, okay? So um, this is South Carolina, one of the 13 colonies. The slave prison and the slave port is in Charleston, South Carolina, and I'm not even an hour and a half from that point, okay? So I, I'm definitely, definitely aware. No way to hide from that point, okay? So now, getting back and listening, we've got time. Okay, we have 33 minutes. We're going to continue to read on uh, what now. So now, here we go. Now, Leviticus. Let's close those tools there. Okay, let's go back. Okay. Now, and again, Leviticus 23, 28. And you shall do no work in that same day, for it is a day of atonement, to make an atonement for you before the Lord power your God. Okay, our power. Uh, verse 29. For whatsoever soul it, it be that shall not be afflicted in the same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. So if you are attempting to not even have a care about the Day of Atonement, you shall be cut off. Now, again, we are here to write, rehearse the righteous acts of the law and your grace. Um, to some people, this information is coming to them pretty late. To some people, they haven't prepared anything to eat a good, full, excellent meal so that they will be able to fast. Um, I'm not eating anything, and uh, usually larger portion 
other than what I normally would eat. But I have done a few fastings a few times. Mark 29, 29, Matthew 17, 21 says some things only come out by prayer and fasting. I've had some habits in my life since I came to know the truth that was kind of tough and rough for me to get rid of. And I went into mode of fasting. Even in the beginning, before I came to knowledge of the truth, I'm not boasting myself. I knew it was something hidden in these scriptures. I knew it was something else, something deeper in these scriptures, okay? Because I remember someone saying something about a long time ago, just way before I came to knowledge of the truth, something about the secret mysteries of the kingdom. And I was like, what secret mysteries? What secret mysteries? Come to find out, that's Matthew 15, 24. It is to you, Israel, to know the mysteries of the kingdom. That's scripture. So uh, <laughs> I heard somebody speaking about that, and I began to fast. I think I fasted, I think for, I'm trying to remember, this is about, this is going on about four years ago. I think I fasted for 21 days. I knew it was at least three weeks. Three weeks and probably some days I fasted to know. I said, Lord, show me the hidden things of this Bible and the secret mysteries and the secret strategies and the blueprints that you have for my life. And I fasted for that for almost almost 21 days. And the Most High, Yahweh Bishop, and I began to open up to knowledge of the truth. Didn't get the name right in the very beginning. I think the name I had in the very beginning was Yahusha. <laughs> but that came to me. I never saw that on the internet. I, it came to me first like that. Okay, so um, all praise and glory is to Yahweh Shemil Shai for that. Okay, now let's continue on. All right, now. Uh, Leviticus 23 and 30. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work that same day, that, soul, that same soul will I destroy from among those people. Verse 31, ye shall do no manner of work, it shall be a statute forever throughout your generation in your, your, your dwellings. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, and it shall be a, and ye shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month at even. Okay, alright. From even to even shall ye celebrate your Sabbath. Okay. Remember, we just went through the Sabbath day here. Okay, so now. Verse 33, and the Lord power spake unto Moses, saying, speaking to the children of Israel, saying that the fifteenth day of the seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord power, unto the Lord power. On the first day it shall be a holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. Okay, seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord power. On the eighth day shall be a holy convocation unto you, and ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord in his solemn assembly. And you shall do no servile work therein. Let's study the word servile. Right. Okay. All right, now. Servile. Strong's H, 5656. Apple Da. Apple Da. Work of any kind, act, bondage, bondage, remember Exodus 22, bondage, uh, 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 bondage is uh, slavery, uh, um, slavery, this work, work, no kind of work, okay, um, uh, Egypt means bondage, that's what the scripture says, bond servant, effect, labor, ministering, even ministering, okay, ministry, office, service, Tillage, use, work, rock. So this is a day that um, I really said ministry and ministering. We are, we we we're to be we're to be holy, holy, holy unto Yahweh Shemem Shah. Okay, that's that. Okay, uh, let's look at this here. Uh, labor, service. Okay, labor, work. Okay. Uh, in erection of tabernacle in. In building the kingdom, uh, uh, building forth the, the tabernacle of David, was to do no kind of work, none, no laborious work, laborious work. Okay, labor, labor of a servant or a slave, no bond servant. And you got to remember all the times coming back to uh, last time we were here. Remember now, last time we were here, three generation of spirits in the third and fourth generation, we were in slavery. You know we were working today. You know we were working tomorrow. You know, you see what I'm saying? You know, you, come on now. I mean, I, I listen, I, I, I can't remember my life as a slave. No, I can't. But what I'm saying is, uh, September, you know, the same crops that's coming out the ground right now around you, wherever you live, is the same kind of crops that was coming out of the ground then. Peanuts coming out the ground, uh, everything, you know, something like that. So, 
Okra is going out, going out still. I mean, you know, people still picking okra right now. In South Carolina, so that's definitely on the menu. Okay, military service. Okay, so we, we definitely see where we come to come from with that, all right? Now let's uh, go back. Continue on here. Where we at? Let's go back up here. I'm trying to figure out where we're at. Okay. That's uh, so now. Uh, where were we? Okay. Let's go back up. Let's go back now. Do no matter work or surgery to be okay. Now here we go. Let's start at thirty one. I couldn't remember where we were, so we're gonna. I want to try to cover everything. Verse thirty one. You shall do no manner of work, for it shall be a statute forever throughout your generations, all your dwellings. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest. Okay, a day of rest. And ye shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month at even, evening sundown from even unto even. That's what the word risen was then. Again, then uh, Revelation uh, 22 and 18 it talks about those individuals who adding added to the words of prophecy. That's when they did when they added. They added even. They took even and add ing on it and put evening. That's how we got the word evening. But the word was originally even. Yeah. Okay. Now, just wanted to point that out. <laughs> no big deal, but I just wanted to point that out. In, uh, verse 32, it shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, and ye shall flick your souls in the ninth day of the even month at even, from even to even, shall you celebrate your Sabbath, okay? And the law of power spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of the seventh month shall be the feast of the tabernacles for seven days unto the law of power. On the first day shall be a holy convocation, you shall do no serve our work therein. So no type of work, no type of laboring, either a man servant, a maid servant, um, not even ministry, okay, really, now ministering, ministering ministry, I mean, of course, you're in your own private sanctuary, you're praying, praising, reading, studying, reading, listening to the reading, um, I'm sure, uh, Prophet Great Millstone, um, some of the larger camps, some of the main camps will probably do a reading, and probably do a, a tribute to, on um, behalf of Atonement, uh, where they will talk about the things that they would do in, in the Atonement, and, uh, I'm sure the apostles will, do something there, so we're definitely gonna um uh, um be tuning into those um throughout the day. If I see any videos where that's happening, I'll go ahead and post those videos and links and record those videos on my channel as well. Okay, now so that you will be able to participate wholly in the day of atonement. Okay, um now um <clears throat> starting off here with uh. Verse 34, speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of the seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles for the seven days of the law of power. Verse 35, on the first day shall be a holy convocation. You shall do no serve our work therein. 36, seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the law of power. On the eighth day shall be a holy convocation unto you, and you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the law of power. It is a solemn assembly, and you shall do no serve our work therein. Verse 37, these are the feasts of the Lord Power, which shall proclaim to be a holy convocation, to offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord Power, a burnt offering and a meat offering, a sacrifice and a drink offering of everything upon this day, his day, Slaki. Besides the Sabbath of the, of the Lord Power, and besides your gifts, and besides all your vows, and besides all your free will offerings, which ye give unto the Lord Power, Verse 39, in the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, you shall keep a feast unto the law of power seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. Okay, so on the first day shall be a Sabbath, and six days later, seven or seven days later, that's a whole week later, shall be another Sabbath. Verse 40, and ye shall take you on the first day of your boughs of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, which are peace trees, trees of peace. And the boughs of thick trees and the willows of the brook, and ye shall rejoice before the Lord power, the Lord your power for seven days, and ye shall keep it, you shall keep it a feast unto the Lord power seven days in the year. It shall be a statute forever in your all your in your generation. Ye shall celebrate it in the seventh month. Ye shall dwell in the booth seven days, all that are 
Israelites born shall dwell in boots, that your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in boots when I brought them out of the land of Egypt, and I, and, and I am your Lord your God, your power. I most declared unto the children of Israel the feast of the Lord power. Let's start the word boots. So I remember saying that a long time ago. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Booth, cottage, covert, pavilion, tabernacle, tent. Remember in Genesis, I think that was Genesis chapter 25, the Bible says that the that, um, children of Israel and Jacob, we dwelled in tents. <laughs> you know, we used to dwell in tents. Now, now, if you think about it, if you think about the Native American Indians, and Native American Indians, Latinos, and Negroes, all three of the 12 tribes of Israel. You think about it now. You think about, you probably remember a long time ago, you probably went to an arts festival when you were in school, or you went to some museum or something like that, and some outing, and you probably remember that the Native American Indians used to used to be in teepees. Remember teepees? And teepees are tent. Children of Israel used to be in booth. We just started the word booth. The word booth is a tent. And it's making more and more sense now that Native American Indians are one of the 12 tribes of Israel. Excellent, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, now, <clears throat> see, there's little tidbits like that, little tidbits of information like that. In fact, I'll do a video on that probably. You know, try to try to really process and look really light on that. But I just really want to take the time and the opportunity to express uh, David Thomas so we all know that the sun goes down the eastern coast. Eastern, in eastern, I'm in the eastern uh, standard time, around 7.30, about 7.31 729, something like that. I know sundown for the Sabbath the other day, Monday evening, and it's Tuesday evening sundown. I think it was at 7.33 p.m. So it's going to be around maybe like 729, 730, something like that, estimated. Okay. So from that time, um, I will enter into a fast. No food, no water, no nothing. Okay, we're going to, and that's, that's and, and you can afford to go a day without eating. Um, some people who may have to take medication or anything like that, um, me, myself, I'll go to the day without, without taking medicine at all. Okay, but if you feel, if you're not, if your level of faith is not at that point, then um, then take your medicine and maybe like a half a glass of water, okay, and put that down, uh, whatnot. So, and let's try and stick with water, not orange juice, grape juice, anything like that. Remember, we're humbling ourselves, okay? We're not going all the way out. We're getting the bare minimum of what we need to do, what we got to do, bare minimum, okay? That's that's part of humility, okay? Okay, so hopefully this lesson has been edifying to you for the Day of Atonement. Um, after the Day of Atonement has passed, I will come back in. Um, tomorrow I will probably post a video on the Day of Atonement also as well. Um... Um, there's another video that I watched this morning um, from men of Baylor, South Carolina. This brother is out of, um, I think, I think he, I think his, 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 he is uh, Brother Shamar. He's out of Lexington County, uh, Lexington, Richland County, um, Columbia side of the house for the state of South Carolina. So um, he's a brother that's close to us. So uh, I will probably post a link to his video as well. Um, he's really a lot shorter than mine, <laughs> but um, cause I, as usual, I always take a lot of time. I always take time to cover some other things, some other facts in my videos as well. So, hope this lesson has been edifying to you. If it has come to your power, from the power go on in spirit. Be how by Shemir Shah. Double honor to the elders and apostles, great millstone who rule well. Shalom to hope elect, and shalom and prepare for the day of atonement starting at sundown around 7:30 p.m. to tomorrow evening at sundown. Shalom.